How SpaceX Builds Rockets Within a Week SpaceX is probably the most ambitious of all Elon Musk's endeavors ever. I know, this is a serious claim since we're talking of the man who made PayPal, creating the fintech industry as we know it. The same man who's The Boring Company is looking to create futuristic underground tunnels for cars. The same man whose Starlink satellites are going to create low latency, high speed internet connectivity for all. But most importantly, high speed internet connectivity that won't give you COVID-19. And of course, how could we forget Tesla, which although not founded by Mr. Musk, is the company that produces electric, high storage, fast smart cars at an unprecedented scale. So one might wonder why on earth Elon Musk is still putting so much energy into his spacefaring company, SpaceX. But why on earth would be the wrong question. Mr. Musk wants to go to Mars, and fast. It's no wonder that his company, SpaceX, has the capacity to build their rockets in under a week. But that's not all. Keep watching and we'll look at all the pieces that have to fit to make these one week rockets a reality. Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. The first and most important aspect responsible for the success and speed of SpaceX is the man himself, Elon Musk. Mr. Musk came up with the idea of SpaceX in 2002 as a way to provide cheap space exploration. He also has big dreams of making humans an interplanetary species in the case of any extinction event like a meteor from outer space, or World War III of course. However, time is of the essence, and Musk knows this as well, as he has commented in the past that we need to speed up our rate of innovation to be able to get to Mars on time. When he says, on time, we can understand that he means, before I die. Because of this, Musk hires workers that are absolutely enthusiastic about the impact of their work on our species. And to be honest, it's pretty wild if your descendants can say that their ancestor helped in making humans multiplanetary. When compared with, say, NASA, SpaceX has 6,000 employees with a median age of 31 years, while 56% of NASA's workforce is 50 years years or older. SpaceX runs like a startup, unlike NASA, where their employees are technically working for the government. Because of this, NASA employees work the regular 40 hours a week, while SpaceX's youthful workforce can stay up to 60 or 80 hours per week, sometimes spending as much as 100 voluntary work hours during critical recoveries and launches. Also, with NASA being government-owned, there is a lot of constraint on the consistency of space exploration by the country. This is because the president, senate, and policies change from time to time, as some congressmen and women will be opposed to using taxpayer money to fund what seems irrelevant. However, at SpaceX, Musk is in charge and has reliable investors who will pump money into the company's projects. To make things even better for Elon Musk, SpaceX launches are extremely cheap in comparison to other aeronautic companies. This is one of Elon Musk's primary objectives for starting the company in the first place, and there are several things making this a possibility. One is the cost of materials that SpaceX have opted to use in their new Starship rockets. In the past, like other aeronautic companies, SpaceX used carbon composite to build rockets. However, a change was observed when citizens of Boca Chica began noticing a structure they thought to be a water tower prominent in the sky. SpaceX had begun using stainless steel alloy for the design of its Starship vehicle. Elon Musk described the choice to go for stainless steel over carbon composite in an interview. He explained that carbon fiber costs $155 per kilogram, with 35% of the material being lost in the construction process, therefore actually making it as expensive as $200 per kilogram. In comparison, stainless steel alloy costs $3 per kilogram. Elon Musk has described this as the best choice on the rocket, as 301 steel is not only cheaper, but is also more durable than carbon composite or aluminum lithium in cryogenic temperatures, the regular temperature in space. NASA spends around $2 billion per launch compared to SpaceX's $62 million for its Falcon 9, which reduces to $50 million when being reused. With the innovation of 301 steel on Starship, this figure is set to go even lower. And speaking of reused, this is also another important factor, as we have already seen the figures. SpaceX strives to make all its spacecraft reusable, using hexagonal silica fiber shield tiles. These shield tiles are useful because re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere without them would disintegrate and burn up the spacecraft. If you as a person were re-entering into the atmosphere, you would probably appear as a tiny pink coloration in the sky and brighten up some kid's day who might even make a wish on your remains. Elon Musk said that the hexagonal shape of the tiles are perfect and make it so that there is no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through the gaps. But beyond the materials that make the process fast, SpaceX also owns a South Texas region in Boca Chica. This is important because launching rockets closer to the equator is optimal. This is why NASA and SpaceX have launch sites in Florida like Cape Canaveral. The reason for this trend is that the Earth moves considerably faster at its equator, 1,670 kilometers per hour to be precise. 
If you were to launch a rocket halfway between the equator and the poles, it would move at 1,180 kilometers per hour. Thus, launching your rocket eastward in the direction of the Earth's rotation of the equator would make you almost 500 kilometers per hour faster than the other rocket launching halfway between the equator and the poles. Another major reason for the choice of Boca Chica is the freedom it gives the company. Unlike other companies, and even unlike SpaceX's other operations in Florida, California, and Texas, this location provides better logistics. For instance, when getting ready to launch a Falcon 9, SpaceX first has to send the nine Merlin engines from Hawthorne, California to McGregor, Texas for testing. It is then sent back to Hawthorne, where it is attached to the Falcon Heavy and trucked over to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, 2,500 miles away for testing. This trucking process is done with 44-wheelers from Bale Brothers and Easy e Trucking, and the spaceship is even modified to fit on roads and under bridges. Although this process requires a lot of movement, money, and time, SpaceX still managed to pull off 26 successful Falcon 9 tests in 2020. However, with Boca Chica, the construction site, testing site, and launch site are all in one place, cutting out a lot of work that would have already been done relatively quickly by Musk and his brilliant team. The few people living in Boca Chica have had their houses bought from them for triple its market valuation, as Musk plans to build a city suited to the needs of the project that will take us to Mars. SpaceX has also purchased more land beyond Boca Chica and plans to call the entire city Starbase. Pretty cool. However, some residents of Boca Chica have refused to sell their homes, and that's a pretty unique experience. Unlike regular people who have to put up with their neighbor's kid's band or something, these guys have neighbors that play heavy metal. But seriously, this new launch site has improved a lot as SpaceX and Elon Musk have already run four high-altitude flight tests for its Starship in Boca Chica from February to May. They include SN9, SN10, SN11, and SN15. Five tests if we're counting the SNL show hosted by Mr. Musk in May, which was also the most popular. And this is part of SpaceX's secret for success, not the shows, the rapid testing. They employ this unique way of not relying too much on computational models, but rather on empirical data from their test flights. This is why they are expecting, maybe even hoping, to see faults when they run these tests. These rapid tests are made possible by the cheapness of each launch, which is also boosted by the rate and reliability of investment, as well as the fact that the company is run by Elon Musk, not a government whose wavering policies may influence the speed of development. The space race is getting hotter by the day, this time not between Russia and the USA, but recently between SpaceX and Blue Origin, Musk and Bezos. In no time, we'd be on our way to Mars, making a new civilization and becoming the extraterrestrial life we've always hoped for. I personally just want to see Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos hopefully gather their space fleet and duke it out in space one day. How long do you think it will be before we get a civilization on Mars? More importantly, who do you think would win in a Star Wars between Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, and check out more awesome ones on the Simply Tech channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.